this mask is kind of cool to just like hide on the side to get your ink. Hey there, it's Adam AK Swimming Bird, and welcome to Splatoon 2 on the Nintendo Switch. There is just a ton of new stuff to show and talk about today, so quick rundown of what we're going to be covering this episode. We've got the giant 1.2 balance patch that has buffs, nerfs, fixes, salmon run changes, the works, and we're going to talk about all that while I try out a new weapon on a brand new map. Now, if one new map wasn't enough, there's also another brand new map in the Salmon Run rotation. And on top of all of this, the Splatfest is in town. So we gotta pick a team and learn what the theme is first. And then when the Splatfest is here, first weekend of September, we have a new weapon as well. That's gonna be the first ever to have the Bubble Blower special. So lots of exciting stuff. Let's learn the Splatfest theme is the power of flight versus the power of invisibility. Which superpower would you choose? The power of flight or the power of invisibility? No contest. I'm flying till I die. <laughs> Soaring through the sky while everyone else is stuck in traffic. That's freedom. If I ran out of mayo with, while frosting a cake. <laughs> whoosh, grocery store. <laughs> First of all, gross. And second, I can just super jump to the store. Yeah, but only if one of your teammates is already there. True, but still, invisibility would be way more fun. I could walk through the square without being mobbed by screaming fans. Aw, poor Marina, that sounds awful. With invisibility, you could spy on people while they're inking their splat zone. <laughs> I'm not even gonna touch that one. Or walk into a bank and, uh, make sure the money is still there. Right. Oh, some villainous tendencies coming out. Is Marina the secret daughter of DJ Octavio? I don't know. Which power would you choose? Head to the Splatfest terminal and pick a side. And the game has been updated. Inkling's overjoyed. There's a new update. Ooh, I love updates. A new stage has been added. Tentacular. And there it is. Manta Maria, not Manta Marina. It's named after the ship, Santa Maria. But it is at a marina or a port. Rossum. That means we have a new place to battle. I can't wait. A new weapon has been added. It's the Sloshy Machine. One of my favorites from the first game, but is it any good? That is what we're going to discuss. Aw, oh, man, that means we have to listen to Sheldon nerd out again. I mean, I like him and all, but slow down, crab man. And this is the sign of a big update with balance changes when they, they tell us that they've updated to improve our play experience. There we go. Check out the official, official sites for deets or just watch the video. I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to read this stuff as well. And one other thing before we leave off the hook here, there has been a lot of new dialogue added to their news reports. The pigeons here are really aggressive. They always try to bite my hair. So <laughs> they've added new lines, but one of the bigger changes, they have tweaked the personalities a little bit, especially Marina. She is now more in line with her Japanese personality. She's a little more shy, maybe not as mean to Pearl in some of their setups and jokes. Let's sail across the seas and make our debut in the new world. Okay, but only if you learn how to at least say hi in another language first. <laughs> and let's see what the last map's here. But I'm, I'm glad they're adding more dialogue lines to keep things fresh. That is the motto of the game here. Man, I hate when the enemy team sticks a sprinkler high up on a wall. Maybe you should try using a charger to compensate for your stature. So she's still going to hit her with some of those sick burns, but at the same time, she's not quite as harsh anymore. And she is more reverent to her elder Pearl, even though she doesn't look it. She is a little older. Okay. So let's go get our shirt here and go pick up the new weapon. Now, I thought a lot about this. I mean, in Splatoon, these squids, unless you're a flying squid or you're super jumping, which I don't tend to do, I don't spend too much time in the air. You wouldn't be able to recharge your ink if you couldn't get in the ink. And you know, power of invisibility. I'm an Octo Rush player at heart. I like Ninja Squid. Mostly, though, I think if I choose a less popular side, I will get matches a little easier. And if I mention you watched the last Splatfest, it took me uh, several hours to get to max rank, but about an hour and a half of that was waiting for a match in tons of lobbies. And that's an unfortunate side effect. If you're on the popular team, you have to kind of hang out a little bit because the game tries to match you up with the other team so you get those official matches that count for more. But unfortunately, you know, that's, that's tougher when you're on the popular team. You're going to be fighting your own side most of the time. So I'm going to go with invisibility and see how that works out. I kind of like the logo a little better as well. And green is my favorite color. All right, Sheldon, you're ready to wield the sloshy machine. Sloshy machine is basically your normal everyday washing machine, except it fires twisting volleys of beautiful, messy ink. 
The spiraling ink volleys provide solid attack power and leave a trail of ink in their wake. Smoke out dirty campers with the auto bombs, speaking of invisibility and octo brushes, and splat them off the map. If they survive that, you can hunt them down with the stingray. This set is perfect for splatting like a wild child and drowning the battlefield in a whirlwind of ink. So let's go ahead and nab that and equip it. And uh, it does have a unique animation, like the slosher, so kind of tap the bottom of it and everything. And if you are looking at clothing, something I forgot to mention, you can hit ZR and zoom in so you can see how your little inkling looks in cool shades and everything. All right, so we're gonna go to the lobby. We've got our new sloshing machine. And before we jump into a crazy match, I'm gonna go into spectator mode, or not spectator mode, but uh, recon mode here. If you hit Y, you can go to any of the stages in the current rotation and check them out. So here we are, Manta, Maria, and we start right near the wheel, which is giant here. A lot of the scale, it's kind of like Mario Kart, where some of the Toads and Yoshis are giant, because if you look at them far off, they look normal size, but if you really zoom in, it's, it's kind of unsettling. So over on the side here, quick little Easter egg we wouldn't see in a match. There is a jellyfish on a unicycle juggling bowling pins to entertain other jellyfish. So this is a pretty cool map. We've got the three mass in the middle. The uh, the ones on either side can only be accessed if you kind of go up here. You can't ink the mast itself. It is protected. And this is a good walkway to get a vantage point. And if you're the attacking team, you can jump up here and go right up to the enemy spawn. So that might be an issue in the future. Usually you don't want the ability or, you know, from your enemies, you don't want them able to get into your area. Now, don't be confused by these side areas. That is uninkable. You'll die if you go down there, but you can kind of jump over here on this side. Also, ink that and get back up. There are unscalable uh, walls back at the spawn, but of course, if you use that mast, you're getting through anyways. This is the center area here with most of the turf, and the, and the main mast is the one that you can ink up and get in the center. This is going to be a big important point early on especially there's gonna be a lot of people trying to get up this mass because it's cool just to be able to scale it and you can kind of splat them easily as they're walking across this grate and not able to refill any of their ink but there are a lot of uninkable surfaces here so you have to learn you know which ones you can get up on and which ones you're not going to be able to and a lot of this yeah you're not going to be able to recharge and uh, you kind of have to yeah going around this is a little difficult where you need to get up onto this part which can be tough. You can go over to the side here maybe and drop to get up and then go over to invade the spawn. But I, I feel like we might have some spawn camping here. I don't know. We'll see. I love the uh, the little jellyfish hanging out and juggling on the starboard side and the beautiful view to port. There are other ships flowing around as well. Little sailboats and stuff. One of the more beautiful stages so far. It's just really cool. Okay, so let's get into some actual matches and learn about this big update. All right, let's see how tower control plays on the new map. And before we get into the big update, I do want to talk briefly about the sloshing machine, the weapon I'm using here. That is returning from the first game, but if you never played or saw Splatoon 1, this is a very strange weapon. It's a handheld washing machine, for one, but it's kind of a fusion between slosher and blaster. You get the sloshing effect that goes up and over obstacles, but you still have to be pretty exact with your aim to do good damage. And unfortunately, as cool as it sounds and looks, it's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. It feels like the normal slosher and blaster do a much better job at those rolls than the sloshing machine. Now, the slosher does not lose that much range. They're pretty close. The sloshing machine and slosher are uh, not too different in terms of how far they can launch out. And a blaster can one hit splat. Unlike the sloshing machine, you gotta get at least one direct hit or a bunch of indirect hits. There's that fall off damage and, and not much of an explosion to it. So, unfortunately, it's really one of those things where I think you're better off trying a different weapon if this one does not fit with you because your mileage may vary, but it, it, honestly, it feels like you're kind of just at a disadvantage using this thing. I was really crossing my fingers and hoping they would do some type of buff to this weapon between games, but it seems like it's really been untouched between Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. And uh, it has an indirect buff because some weapons have different ranges, but other than that, it just gets destroyed in the uh, slosher department, especially when we have the tri-slosher, which is such a beast right now. And you're probably better off playing 
a normal blaster again if you, you want to just get those direct hits and splat. So it does have the auto bomb, one of my favorite subs, probably my favorite of the new subs, but it also has the stingray, my least favorite of the new specials. So kind of a trade-off. You're a sitting duck when you use that stingray, so you want to have some distance. Definitely a better set for ranked mode rather than turf, and we'll have to wait a little longer to get the infamous splat bomb rush that the sloshing machine is kind of known for in the first game. But there you go. Let me know your thoughts on the sloshing machine. I'm a little sad to see that it wasn't buffed, but who knows? They're doing tons of balance updates, and they could always change it in the future. Speaking of which, we have a lot to talk about in terms of balance, so let's get right into it. And ranked mode, while we're on the subject, there was a bug where if you lost a player in a match, your little rank bar would still crack and, and break and stuff like that, and you'd lose rank and points, even though you're not supposed to if you are down at least one or, you know, more people. It's not really supposed to have a big effect. Speaking of sloshers, man. Yeah, the tri slasher just kind of beats this in most ways, even without, you know, losing or sacrificing much range. But yeah, you're, you're not gonna have to worry about that anymore if you get disconnect, so that was a bug that they fixed. Spectator mode, a new feature in this game for competitive and just, you know, watching matches. If you're playing private ones, you can have two extra people spectate and jump around. There are a lot of visual bugs with spectator mode where certain UI elements weren't showing up. You might not see damage you were taking if you're spectating a certain player. Stuff like that. They fixed a bunch of that, so now spectator mode should function a lot more consistently and, uh, and work like it's supposed to. Salmon Run. This is the big exciting thing for me. I love Salmon Run. There's a brand new stage, Lost Outpost, the first of hopefully many. And this is uh, a kind of unique looking one. It's a ramshackle sort of housing floating boat area where you're going to be fighting amongst all these walls that are going to separate you. Oh man, I was so focused on splats and talking that I didn't realize they pushed the tower so much. So yeah, the uh, the Lost Outpost map, you're going to be going around on a lot of docks and grates, but when you're in the housing area, the walls are going to block your viewpoint of your teammates, so you're going to have to be really coordinated and talk to each other, or at least throw out a booyah, or this way when you are getting cornered by five drizzlers and a fly fish and uh, dying amongst golden eggs at your feet. So it's going to be a tough new map. Let's get into another match here. Okay, so uh, on the subject of Salmon Run still, we have 21 new weapons that have been added to the Shoal, the local multiplayer mode. You can play the Lost Outpost there. We're going to have that map in the next rotation here. So next episode, you get to see the new Salmon Run map. But 21 weapons being added locally means there's probably more in the online variety as well. There's been quite a few already, so it's good to see more variety being added. The Fly Fish. Now, this is a big thing. You can now defeat a fly fish using the splashdown special on their launchers, I'm assuming when they're open only. That's something I've tried before and did not work, but it has been changed because so many people hate the fly fish, and uh, the splashdown was not quite as useful other than a get off me sort of thing or revive your teammates. So now you can use that on the fly fish. If you got that and you don't want to use your bombs, go for it. See, the stingray can still be useful, <laughs> even if, uh, <laughs> if I got some range on him, I can take some people down. Okay, and uh, there was an issue with the Stinger boss when you were using an Inkjet special or a blaster. If you tried to fire, you were not getting that extra explosion damage. You're really just knocking one pot at a time off the Stinger, so it was not a very effective way to take down one of those bosses, but they fixed that, so the explosion kind of splash damage works well to take them down, so it should be a lot faster. Steelheads, if you were destroying them with a Stingray special, then uh, you weren't getting your ink color splatted, so that was that was really a, a bad deal to take them down that way. I know I did that quite a bit, so it's now going to be painting in your own ink color, which is nice. There was an issue where one of the mothership coolers, if you destroyed it, it would like appear invulnerable to other players, and so just kind of a weird visual thing, but it was messing with people. There was issues where you could clip through Mariner's Bay, and uh, there was issues where random crew members could jump into your friend's match, which is never good, getting people in there you don't want. <laughs> so they fixed that. And then a bunch of weapon parameters have been changed in Salmon Run specifically. There's also tons of buffs and, and nerfs and things for uh, normal battles. So this is just applying to Salmon Run. There was an issue where the slosher was dealing different damage to Salmonids depending on where you were standing. That was a major bug, so they fixed that. Let's get another match. 
Then we got the Blaster. They have increased the damage dealt by shot explosions by approximately 40% and increased or decreased ink consumption for each shot by approximately 20%. And again, if you want to follow along with these patch notes, there's a link in the description to look at them. And uh, so yeah, Blaster, one of the notoriously kind of weaker weapons in Salmon Run specifically. A strong weapon in multiplayer, but when you got a ton of targets, not so good. But now they buffed it, so it should be better. The Clash Blaster, a short range blaster, the damage dealt by the explosions increased by 25% and decreased ink consumption, ink consumption by 20%. So that is definitely better than another one that I had trouble with when that was in the rotation. Carbon Roller, they decreased the ink consumption by vertical and, and uh, horizontal swings by 30%. So you won't use as much, which is good, because that mo you run out of ink constantly in Salmon Run when you're trying to kill so many things. And then the Splat Roller, that also had its ink consumption for horizontal and vertical flips reduced by 14%. Percent, so much better to use that as well. The rollers are really good in that mode for just wiping up the salmon rush. Okay, so let's get into multiplayer changes. There was an issue where when you're taking damage over a while, like a continuous amount of time, sound effects didn't really match the damage you were taking. Oh jeez, man, it's crazy. Uh, trying to go after that and the brush just snuck up on me. Sneaky, sneaky octo brush. Uh, there was like a sound effect that was hitting when you would hit invulnerable players with the splashdown. Lots of weird sound glitches. There was uh, players hiding behind the Brello weren't being targeted by Stingray or Thermal Link and Haunt abilities. They were basically blocking themselves with the, the Brella, but that wasn't intended because those allow you to see through stuff, so you should be able to see through the Brella, of course. And then uh, there was an issue with opponents they weren't damaged when you would run into them with a brush or roller when you were on like an uninkable surface, which that's a big buff to uh, to brushes and rollers you might not have noticed in the game, is that you can still go over uninkable surfaces and not slow down at all, and you can still splat stuff, but you weren't hitting people as easily before when you were doing that, but they fixed that bug. Uh, there was people inking the trees on Inkblot Art Academy and the Reef to try to get points, but it will no longer fill your special gauge or give you any turf points for inking those trees. So, you know, protect the environment. <laughs> Don't ink the trees. Uh, you could still. And there's an issue with uh, Inkblot Art Academy where you were, like, jumping with super jumps and stuff, and uh, in the inkjet you would fall through the stage, which was never good. Speaking of the inkjet, there we go. <laughs> time that good. Uh, there was an issue on the main stage where certain areas would not appear to be inked on the map when they were actually inked. There was stuff with Sturgeon Shipyard where you could fall through the stage. Port Mackerel had uh, some spots on the uninkable container tops that you could still get your special filled and, uh, and ink those for points. There was some issues with the movements of the forklifts in Port Mackerel where you're getting caught and the sponges would kind of push you into the forklift and stuff like that. All the new objects and stuff on these stages, obviously, they gotta hammer out some of the bugs with adding things like sponges that expand onto previous stages. The path of uh, tower control in Port Mackerel, there was an issue where you could get caught between the pillar and the stage and stuff like that, and you would get this crazy camera shake, like lots of, lots of that type of stuff before we get into the weapon things. And uh, the sponges near the spawn points, there was an issue with that sort of thing in Port Mackerel. Okay, so let's get into the weapon stuff. This is the meat of the update for most players, I think. The sploosh matic your movement speed while shooting was increased by 11%, so that is known as a, one of the faster movement shooters, so that's a good change to that. You can get up close and do that damage faster. The Luna Blaster, you now have uh, accuracy increased immediately after jumping by 17%, because, you know, a lot of weapons are not as accurate when you're jumping around shooting them. That is an advantage of using the, uh, the sloshing machine. I don't think it really loses anything from jumping if you're going to fire and you can kind of run around pretty pretty well with it. There we go. Uh, but yeah, so the Luna Blaster can get more accurate shots after jumping, and then also the, the duration of inaccurate firing after jumping was reduced by a fourth of a second, so trying to give the Luna a little bit of a uh, buff, even though it got a lot of nerfs and ink consumption and stuff between games. I think they're trying to make sure people still want to use it, even if it got pretty heavily nerfed. You'll see that theme here later with the Dynamo. So, blasters. The normal blaster, custom, and hero blaster replica. It's the same as the normal blaster. 
the, they reduce the duration of inaccurate firing after jumping by a fourth of a second, just like the Luna Blaster. Oh man, we're not going to be able to hold this. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a buff there. The Clash Blaster, the area for a single shot is expanded because that is a very fast short range blaster similar to the Luna in some ways. And that is, uh, that's going to ink more now, which is definitely a, uh, a nice buff. Ah, and then the, uh, the ink consumed by a single shot for the Clash Blaster reduced by 20%, so should be a lot more effective. The Carbon Roller, uh, they decrease the amount of ink consumed by horizontal and vertical flicks by 25%, so similar, not quite as good as in Salmon Run, the buff, but still similar. Man, I got so many splats, but that was a rough, rough break against that green team. Okay, another match. All right, so back to the weapon changes. Carbon Roller, you don't use as many ink by 25% when you're flicking. The Splat Roller, Crack on Splat Roller, and Hero Roller Replica, all the same, you know, base roller. They decrease the amount of ink consumption for horizontal vertical swings by 10%, so a little bit, not quite as much. The Dynamo, they extended the range for dealing maximum damage to an opponent by 14%, so doesn't sound like much, but the Dynamo getting a little bit more in the uh, the damage department is going to help it a lot, because that's just like the Luna, that's another one that was very popular in the first game, got nerfed significantly between games, and while we only have the one set for some of these weapons, it's a little rough. The Dynamo does not have the best kit in this game so far, but we'll have more Dynamos, you know, released in the future. The Splat Charger, Fire Fin Splat Charger, Hero Charger Replica, Splatter Scope, Fire Fin, fin Splatter Scope, all the same base weapon, of course, but different sets. They reduce the amount of time required to fully charge a shot by 4 60th of a second. So that, you know, that sounds really minor and small, but having a faster charge is going to, you know, every time you fire, that's going to help you out. So you can charge faster on all the base chargers. The E-Leader 4K and E-Leader 4K scope, the fully, you know, the same amount of uh, time has been reduced for a full charge. So you can charge quite a bit faster. Save your life against that ink armor when everyone's pushing in on you. These chargers are having a rough time in Splatoon 2 with all these close range rapid fire weapons. The GooTuber got quite a few buffs. That is a weird charger that holds its charge longer, but is a slower charge, and it doesn't really seem like that base ability is enough to uh, to make it viable. So they're trying to buff it and make it more usable and popular to even try. So they reduce the amount of time required to fully charge a shot for that one by 5 60th of a second, and they reduce the amount of time to fire a stored char charge by 5 60th of a second as well to kind of balance it out. But you still have a long time compared to a normal charger to hold your charge, so you're supposed to charge it and move in to the front lines, but if you're a charger player, you're probably not going to want to do that, so I don't know. We'll see if someone can uh, can uh, link a very high-level GooTuber play, but I think we're kind of still waiting on that sort of thing. The Heavy Splatling and Hero Splatling re Replica. Movement speed while charging increased by 20%, and movement speed while shooting increased by 3%. Pretty big buff there, because you've got to be able to move around to really spray that ink, and there we go. All right, another one. Okay, back to... The buffs and nerfs. Not too many nerfs. They're trying to buff stuff rather than nerf and bring some of the other weapons up to speed, which I appreciate that style. The N Parry Splat Duelies. That is a very popular set. Has that curling bomb for movement. We've got one on my team. And uh, I just saw the curling bomb. It also has the Ink Jet, which is so popular. It's the new Ink Zuka in many ways, so it's getting, getting a lot of use at high level play. Those Splat Duelies, they extended the firing range by 9%, same with the normal Splat Duelies and Hero Dooley replicas, but they increased the points required to fill the special gauge from 170 to 200. I think previously they had reduced that to try to make those more popular, but now they saw how popular they've become, so they they kind of nerfed them a little bit like they did with the Tri Slosher and some of the other ones in the last big update that balanced stuff. So the, uh, the same for the normal Splat Duelies and... Uh, and here are Dually Replicas, they got the slightly longer range, 9%, but they now have to do 190 points of turf to get their special rather than the 170. So the end parry ones, you need even more, but both of them got a uh, bit of a nerf because they are very powerful and quick to charge that special. And then the, uh, the last part of the weapon changes. The baller, the only special to really get changed overall, during use, they reduce the amount of damage received from opponent shooters, excluding blasters, splatlings, and duelies by 40%. So blasters can still 
blast through that outer shell of the baller and make it so they just kind of stop in their tracks and have to explode. But if you're playing a shooter, a splatling, or a dually, you're going to have a tougher time breaking that shell. So that's going to help it a little bit because the baller, in, in many ways, is a, uh, a kraken from the first game, but is having a, uh, a rough time, I think, competing with Ink Armor for popularity and usefulness. So there we go. Those are the weapon bounce and change additions to this new patch. And uh, there's some other issues too that they fixed, like players who were in your last battle during the Splatfest will now appear in your square. There was an issue where if you were trying to go into records in League Battle, it would cause the game to crash. And some other issues where you couldn't draw on the edge of your screen if you're doing the graffiti, you know, drawings, doodles for the square. And also, last but not least, an issue where after a multiplayer match, there would be this long animation. I saw a GIF of it where you would just have your experience just go and go and go and would fill. I don't think it actually reflected the amount of experience you were getting, but you could just level up forever. It was a weird, weird bug where it would just would never end seemingly, but they fixed that as well. So there we go. There are more patches on the way. They've already said, I think we're getting some more gear here pretty soon. So if all this wasn't enough, there's more updates. I think we're also gonna get a, uh, a more major content update before too long. Just like with the first game, we had a couple months, and then in August we had the big update that added the Sloshers and Splatlings originally. I think the uh, the plan is to do, maybe in September, one of those types of updates, and maybe we'll see a couple new weapon types, hopefully. So we got a couple new ones already, you know, with the Brella and the Dooleys, but I'd like to see even more. And speaking of, you know, weapons to be added. I have a feeling now that we've gotten some of the stranger permeations of uh, weapons, like we got or permutations, we got the squiffer, you know, the, the sloshing machine here. I have a feeling we're going to get the Hydra Splatling next because that is kind of a glaring omission from some of the main different types of weapons in the first game that were added. So there we go. Let's play some more matches here, though, and then I can focus on trying to play and not talking as much. This is rough. So we have the two zones trying to hold both of them down during this. is uh, tougher than it seems with that big open center area. I've been kind of cutting out the matches I've been playing on Port Mackerel because that's the other map going on right now, but I wanted to focus on the new new map. And I've had a lot more luck on Port Mackerel, let me tell you. The, uh, the new version of Splat Zones on that map has one big zone in the center instead of the two really separated zones. I saw him trying to jump up there after me. But yeah, so so this is a, a little more similar to the old Port Mackerel, but we don't have to deal with the zones too far apart. I think they learned their lesson, those developers. The first game had some maps with zones really far apart, and they have been changed. Moray Towers and, uh, and Port Mackerel both have close together zones or one big zone. And uh, yeah, this is, this is rough. Like I mentioned, I need to get a lot of indirect hits with the sloshing machine, or, you know, one good and, uh, and a partial sort of hit with it. The Stingray's growing on me. I, I haven't really played much of it in rank, so now I'm, you know, seeing the usefulness more. I got some practice with it in Salmon Run, where I think it really shines. Painting the wall a little bit there. And yeah, that was so rough. I feel like yeah, brushes are making it tough to get in. I have to use that range, but still, I feel like they can survive enough shots to just close that gap and take me out. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how we did here, but not too pretty. Lots of splats. Man, Sem or whatever that is, is, uh, <laughs> they might have disconnected. So there we go. There's that message I was talking about. We, we won't lose any rank. Let's maybe finish up with one more here. I want to go out on a win on this new map. So let's do another match. Okay. This is going to be the last one. Win or lose. Thank you for... Listen to me, listening to me just kind of yap on and on about the update, but this was a big update with tons of stuff changed and a lot of additions. The first really major one that we've had, but there will be many more in the future. I'm very much looking forward to new weapons, and the big thing, I want to jump into that new Salmon Run map and see how that plays. We're almost at the end of August here, so I only have a few more chances to try to get the headlamp helmet of my dreams and then we have a new piece of gear on the way to be excited for and of course the ooh, the splat fest one thing i really don't like about the stingray is that i can't throw my sub weapon out even obviously you can't fire because it's using the same 
button. I can't sh I can't slosh when I'm stinging. But I, I would like to be able to use my auto bomb to save myself if I get you know someone up close. Because apparently the yeah the the stingray only does about two damage per frame, so you have to really hold it on there, as you've seen, to actually take someone down. I did not mean to jump down. Ooh, no, no, no. Ah. Well, took somebody out. They have that ink armor. And again, yeah, seeing ink armor and a lot of the stuff that is popular right now, tri slosher ink armor, I feel like, is really rough for the sloshing machine to deal with because you gotta, you gotta be super accurate, but I don't think you're rewarded quite as much as you are with a blaster. I guess you get a, a faster, you know, movement speed and, and kind of turf coverage in a way, but it still is a pretty thin stream of ink. The usefulness of being able to slosh over stuff is a little limited on certain maps. This one really revolves around the center pillar here, the mask, but I don't know if it's, uh, it's been so useful being able to slosh on this one, so I think, you know, if I'm gonna be trying to play this sort of weapon, may as well try out some of the blasters, like the new one, especially because a lot of, you know, the Clash Blaster, a lot of the new ones got buffed, or, you know, the old ones as well, so it's, uh, yeah, the, this, this wasn't in when the patch launched, but I, I really hope that next, next patch we get some sloshing machine buffs, and then later on we'll have the crazy ball, or not ball, uh, splat bomb rush version, which is gonna be scary to deal with. Any Anything with a bomb rush on it can be really rough in most modes. So, yeah, one last thing I wanted to mention, I, I alluded at the beginning to another weapon for the splat fest. We're gonna get another one before that, and of course a new version of the uh, Shifty Station, the Mystery Zone. We'll get a new map layout for that. But the uh, the new weapon we're getting is the Forge Splattershot Pro. So that was one in the first game, but now it has a suction bomb for sub and the brand new Bubble Blower Special, which should be really interesting. Should work well in Turf Wars, even if the Forge is, you know, a little bit more of a ranked weapon. But the, uh, the bubble blower, you're gonna be able to flick this big bubble blower and it throws out three bubbles. They can be shot by your teammates or you to explode them and they blast ink all over the place. It's almost like a ink strike in a way. But your opponents can also shoot them a bunch of times and they will shrink, shrink, shrink until they're gone and not leave any ink behind. Now, that seems bad, but it means that they are gonna have to hit through them to hit anything, so they actually act as a bit of a shield. And if you are very strategic with where you lay down those bubbles, you can really protect yourself as well as your buddies. I think it would be really good against like chargers and things that have to get a nice exact aim on you because they might not be able to see you behind those big beautiful bubbles. So, uh, so yeah, that'll be interesting to try out. We'll have that during the big splat fest. And uh, if you do, don't follow me on Twitter, if you've got a Twitter, I want to mention that's where I, I, you know, say, hey, I'm playing Salmon Run if you want to join in. Or for the Splatfest, I'm going to try to do some team battles this time and, and have you guys join in. I just added a bunch of new people, but again, I'll be cycling out friends in the future and adding new people to uh, to let everyone who wants to get in, you know, only 300 is the, uh, the limit I have. But I'm going to try my best to get as many people in over the course of us playing this game as want to play. So thank you guys so much. I think we got this one. If we can just keep this going. This mask is kind of cool to just like hide on the side to get your ink. I thought this was going to be a bad spot to stand because it's a great, but it's deceptive. You can go on the wall to get your ink back. All right, there we go. Going out on a win. I, uh, I'm going to hang up the sloshy machine though. I'll probably use it for my unmentionables and stuff and not for trying to splat enemy inklings. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. I very much appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, then you're going to be able to see more of these videos easier in the future, of course. And there's that little bell notification to let you know when new videos are posted. I also tweet them out. And there we go. We hit A-. minus. Thank you guys so much again for joining me. And I, uh, I hope you're enjoying some of the buffs out there to everyone who got them. I'll see you next time.